Sioux Falls and welcome to planning preview for the month of May. Uh, my name is Jason Bieber with the planning office at the city of Sioux Falls and joining me this month as always is Janet, uh, our chairwoman for the yes, planning commission. that's right. Hello Jason. It's great to see you here. Um, actually a nice day out for once. So. I know, the sun's out, that's awesome. That's yeah. right. So yeah, we got a little bit, maybe a smaller agenda than we had last yes. month, but still some interesting items. So maybe we get right into it. Yeah, let's okay, dig into great. that number one. Um, we're looking at a rezone over close by Drake Springs Park. It's a residential. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about their rezoning from a single family residential to a RT1 single family residential. So what's the difference? Yeah, great question. So this was one of those things that we added as part of Shape Places. Mm -hmm. We call it the uh, um, single family traditional district. And it's really for those lots within our core area that are maybe less than 50 feet wide sure, right. or smaller than 5,000 square feet. One of the great things about Shape Places is previously they actually had to go get variances and you could oh, never yes. build on them. And so it was just a real struggle. But this is one of those other great things that we can highlight it's um, Seacog or Lynn Keller Forbes oh, actually sure. moving a house onto it. Uh, the lot has a little bit of setback challenges, so this zoning district allows us to get a get a house moved on there and really a vacant lot um, to have another single family house in our core neighborhood. So. I think that's amazing, yep. and it will probably be affordable. I'm guessing yeah. since yep. Lynn's involved. Typically, yes. that's what she likes to do. Yeah. Uh, we've seen where they move all these houses on and fix them up and then sell them to a, for affordable families. So it's a great reuse. Of Oh, yeah. Not only houses, but but some of the lots that typically before shaped places were really hard to develop. So yeah, great. perfect. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, number two. So we are moving from a recreational district to a general institutional um, and single family. So that's this one's out really west of town, mm -hmm. George McGovern Middle School. Yep. So the school district is looking at doing some changes out there. So tell us a little yep. bit about that. Yep, so this is kind of in that northwest part of town that we've seen tremendous growth over yes, the last, lot. what, four years since Jefferson High School was really announced out there. Um, so this is just southeast of the McGovern Middle School and just south of our fire station out there, which, you know, I've been kind of out there maybe on an island by themselves <laughs> yes. for like 10 years, and now we're getting continued growth out there and it feels like, hey, it was great that we got those in prior to all the development and stuff out there. So the school district's now looking at building another elementary school on some land just south of our fire station out there. So Yeah, and that will be much needed, yep. the growth we've seen out there. Lots of new single family houses in development. It's, yeah. it's nuts out there, yep. Yes, very good. All right, our third one, it's like a conditional use permit for on-sale alcohol beverages, but it's uh, within a sensitive mm -hmm. land use. So this one is out, um, kind of by a Burnside Park. Mm -hmm. um, yep. that, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so this is the Ethiopian restaurant the gentleman wants to open mm -hmm. it uh, back up. And I know it's kind of been a restaurant here over the last 10 years, kind of keep switching hands. Um, but this one really is just to, to give them another option of, of some things to sell as part of the restaurant use. Sure. And they have a bar in there and possibly a stage where they may do some, some music and that kind of stuff in there, so. Oh, well, well, hopefully they're successful. Like you said, yeah. it's kind of gone through a different variety of hands over yep. the years, so hopefully that'll be the winner. Yeah, and then it looks like we have another conditional mm -hmm. use permit for on-sale alcohol beverages, which is a sensitive area. Um, this one is kind of exciting though. Yeah. It's the um, old building, historic building, mm -hmm. that's gonna be redeveloped. It was originally a, a grocery store, Yeah, I think back right? in the day, yeah. Yeah, and so they wanna sell alcohol now as they redevelop it. It's a coffee shop, alcohol, yep. okay, yep. yeah. So there, uh, so the applicant here, you know, he's been working on this building, kind of to cool. try and, maybe go back to the way things were, you know, in the 40s and 50s where you actually had neighborhood type services here. Yeah. So the applicant is busy, if you've been by there, busy taking out the outside, working on the inside to really create a coffee shop for this neighborhood. And one of those options he wants to have is possibly have um, on sale alcohol, it'd be beer and wine, maybe sure. to do mimosas and those type of things. Um, they did have a neighborhood meeting uh, last Thursday. Mm. Uh, staff wasn't really able to attend that one, but heard some positive things from the neighborhood, but we still wanna wait and have that sure. public hearing at the Planning Commission on Wednesday. Right. Um, and then we'll be able to uh, kind of gauge if this is a thing that the neighborhood wants and, and really, 
it's it's a little unique type thing. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's typically in a residential neighborhood, but could be something that the neighborhood could really get behind or something maybe they don't want. And so that's why we have those public hearings and you guys get to make all the tough decisions, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's always great to hear from the neighborhood. Yep, I remember absolutely. the first time they came forward, um, we had lots of support from yep. the neighbors yep. and redeveloping that. So it was exciting to see. Because yeah. you just don't see that in those core historic areas like that. You don't. And so this will be another good test for some of the ones. Um, we had did or done the um, pizza place over there. Oh, um, yeah, Sunny's. Sunny's, yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, little different just because that one is by the universities yeah. and on 26th Street it's a little bit more of an arterial, but a similar type use. Right. Um, but that's really why we want to hear from the neighborhood and really have that public hearing and, and that's where then you guys can yeah. get all the information and, and make a decision kind of on the seat of the conditional use permit. They yeah. still have to go in front of council to get their right. license and all that stuff, but it, yeah. but it really will be a good test to, to see if we can start getting some of these neighborhood amenities kind of coming back like you talked about. So Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. look forward to the conversation and mm -hmm. people who come forward. Yeah. yeah. And then I think that's kind of what's on our agenda, right, Jason? Oh, we got one more, one the more. initial development plan. Oh, for, that's yeah. right, yes. So this is kind of a reason why I highlight this one is just kind of an interesting thing. Um, we're kind of updating the initial development plan for the USD Discovery District. Uh, that development out there, um, kind of slowed down a little bit, but now with some extra funds from the state and the city, we're actually gonna get that first building constructed out there and uh, hopefully start getting that thing going because yes. it can be a really cool area for research oh, and, yeah. and different jobs out there. So one of those ones that I think is starting to get the ball rolling and I think over the next you know couple years, we could start seeing quite a bit of development within that specific district, so. Yeah, yeah. very exciting. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, thanks, Jana, yes. for running through these. And stay tuned after the break, we're gonna have one of our longtime planning commissioners on here to talk a little bit about the number of years he's worked uh, with the planning commission since he's down to about his last month. So stay tuned and we can kind of have a conversation with Larry, one of our planning commissioners. Thank you. Hey, this is Seth with the City of Sioux Falls Housing Division. I'm here today with today's Home Maintenance Minute uh, to talk to you about your air conditioner and how to take care of it. So one thing that I like to do once a year uh, is to make sure, first and foremost, that your disconnect is turned off. All air conditioners should have a disconnect on the outside as well as on the panel. So you wanna turn the breaker off at the panel, turn your disconnect off outside, and then you know there's no electricity in the unit. Okay, then if you look on the top, there's four bolts that hold this fan assembly on. If you take those bolts out, lift this assembly out and off and over to the side a little bit, just take a simple garden hose and go in around the fins on the inside of the unit and spray water from the inside out. And so if you look on the outside of an air conditioning unit, um, there are fins, it's much like a radiator in a car, um, and they get clogged. They get clogged with cottonwood, trees, debris, and, and leaves, and dirt, and dust. And simply going in from the inside and pushing that material out with water um, will clean that up, and you, it'll keep your air conditioner running much longer. Thanks for being with me today with today's Home Maintenance Minute. Welcome back to Planning Preview for the month of May. Uh, joining me now is Larry Lutke, who's been on our Planning Commission. This is gonna be your actual, the May meeting's your last meeting. Yep for the Planning Commission, so I don't want you to tear up quite yet, okay? So we can get through this discussion. <laughs> but I just wanna highlight this because I wanted you on, and then we we have another one that's coming off, Sean Irvin, who unfortunately with his schedule and stuff couldn't be on the program with me because I really wanted to talk to both of you and, and maybe give the residents of Sioux Falls just an idea of how many meetings you guys actually do and how many years you've been on it, right? Yeah, so 10 years, uh, so we do a planning briefing, yeah. you know, every, every month at noon and then we have a uh, Sioux Falls planning meeting uh, which can usually go from 30 minutes to four plus hours <laughs> um, and then you have Minnehaha yep. joint and then you have Lincoln joint so it, it does and those typically can take 30 minutes yeah. to a couple hours too depending on you know what's going on um, and it so it's it is a commitment mm -hmm. um, you know and we we're talking before we started you know how I got even I was having lunch with Mayor Huther one day yeah. 
and literally I told him my weaknesses and what I wanted to do in the future. And he's like, Larry, I got the perfect thing for you. You're gonna meet with Jeff. Um, he's gonna, you know, get you all taken care yeah. of. I didn't know anything that, you know, what was going on. Like, and when I met with Jeff, literally he came in with a binder and then another binder on top of it, another book. And I'm like, I'm not gonna read this. <laughs> I mean, it was literally that tall. And so um, I was gonna ask for books on tape, but you know, the other guys don't have those, but. What, what I think is funny about that too is like um, Huther telling you, Mayor Huther telling you, oh yeah, I'm gonna have you meet with Jeff. He probably didn't tell you, well, you're gonna be doing this for 10 years, right? <laughs> no, I mean, because no, at all. 10 years, right? You've been on this and you had touched a little bit about it and I was just figuring this out in my head. You know, we typically have, you know, on, a, on an average, what, eight to 10 items a month just for the, our regular planning commission, yeah. right? So you take that times 12, which is about 96 items a year, right? Probably around 100 times 10 years. You've made a decision or made a recommendation on probably over a thousand rezonings, conditional uses, preliminary subdivision plans, alternative, I mean, all those different things over your 10 years. That's a thousand decisions that you guys, that you had to make and also Sean, I mean, that's just a crazy yeah. amount of stuff. And you don't get paid for it, it's <laughs> your own time, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's one of the things that's great with the planning commission is the people that we have on there typically make it their 10 years, right? Yep. I mean, you guys are passionate about Sioux Falls. You want to be on the uh, planning commission and we don't have a lot of people that come off and if it is it's because maybe a job change or a, a, a family issue or something it's it's such so great about it everybody stays on for the 10 years and i just think that that's amazing that you guys put that much time and effort into this planning commission and how serious it is right yeah and i would say you know the first year or two you're kind of trying to figure out what you're even part of yeah uh, because there's just so much you know, before Shape Places, I mean, it was it was a lot more work. And yeah. I think we actually had more line items yeah. on the agenda at that time, but Shape Places has really changed. And I know a lot of people sometimes come and say, hey, you know, we don't like this Shape yeah. Places, but I think it's actually helped streamline stuff and actually made it, you know, better for, you know, neighboring properties to basically protect mm -hmm. them from what's going, you know, next to them. So there's a buffer and setbacks yeah, and all agree. that great stuff. I mean, what it kind of found through the whole process is that you know, um, you're not gonna make everyone happy. No, no. Um, I've probably, honestly, I'm a real estate agent. <laughs> I've probably lost a couple dozen or more deals uh -huh. or more that maybe I don't even know. I mean, I get Snapchats or pictures of people listing their properties <laughs> with other people. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, is that at the end of the day, you've got to make yeah. the right decision uh, and, instead of worrying about feelings. Yeah. You know, it's basically, hey, does this make sense? Yes, it does. Do we need to make sure that we, you know, need stricter setbacks or buffer yard? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's what we have to do because you have to you have yep. to protect land rights. And, and to in 100% right on that. And you know what I don't think people and you guys get the brunt of that kind of stuff is is the planning commission really, I mean, your guys' job is to make a recommendation on land use, right? Is this a good land use fit? It's when these rezonings get to the council where the council who are elected, you know, you guys are appointed, right? You're not elected, where maybe they take more of the emotional factor into these decisions. So I know it's, I've been at some of these meetings and you got, you were just telling me before the, the um, start of the se segment that, you were first where you were supposed to start, but then you just listened was the Walmart rezoning yeah. <laughs> on 85th and Minnesota, which we all know was a pretty contentious item. And you were just telling me how you were sitting there and you're like, do I really want to be doing this? Getting yelled at by constant people. And, yeah, I mean, and, that, that room was totally full. Yeah. They were yelling at the planning members and I'm like, and I didn't even know what I was getting myself into. I just literally got a book and said, hey, um, this is the next meeting, we're gonna have you sit this one out. So I figured I'd go and check out what it was. And I was just blown away, like, did I get myself into something that, you know, I shouldn't have? And, but no, it, it was, I would say it's one of the greatest things because literally, you know, a couple things I've working on is, you know, public speaking yep. and then dealing with conflict on the spot yep. is basically gotcha. what I told Mayor Huther. And if you wanna learn how to do those, you're gonna, planning commission basically was the best yes. thing for that. Uh, because, yeah, I mean, I, I still, best friend from, you know, elementary, middle school, high school, college. Um, that's probably the most impactful one where, you know, we were doing that rezoning up at what, sixth and, is that Madison up there? Uh, where that uh, barn was, is that Madison? No, that was um, Bonson, sixth Bonson. and Bonson. Bonson, yes. And so literally 
for you know a best friend to basically say you're gonna murder my kids yeah, yeah. when you know a lot of people understand that we we care about everybody oh yeah it's just yeah. that you know land rights and we know you know path committee like that that yeah you know the path committee is going to basically make sure that kids are not going to get hit like yeah. i mean it's there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and that's where you know at first you're like you don't know the full process where you're kind of doubting hey is the city staff mm -hmm. doing their jobs yep but absolutely. over the years as you you go through it and the city staff come in and you know basically tell us what they do and how they do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you come more comfortable of what the process is, and so a lot of the citizens don't really see that process that happens behind the scenes. But you know, us us members mm -hmm. basically know what their job is, and so when they say that, hey, this is what we're going to do, we we take that and go with that. Yeah, and and I think you guys do an amazing job with that. And like I said, to be do, doing it for ten years and to hear some of the contentious ones where we have, you know, probably what, one, one a year, that's pretty bad that, yep. that you feel like you're just getting yelled at and, and all that different stuff. But I think some of those decisions, and you weren't, you didn't do the Walmart decision, obviously, but even the planning commissioners that did that, I think we hear a lot from the neighbors out there, like, thanks for now doing this. It, it's not as bad as everybody said it was gonna be. And so typically, you know, there's a lot of those decisions where, you, where people are saying it's the worst thing ever, but when you mm -hmm. start to go back after, well, crap, 10 years, right, yep. that you've been doing it, well, you kind of like see the 20, them, so. What, the 26th Street and Minnesota, um, Walgreens. Walgreens, yeah. yeah that, people, I remember yeah. that was a big one. We had neighbors that were yep. up in arms and they did a great job. You know, thank you, Walgreens, for that, yeah. basically doing what you, you yeah. said you were going to do. And that's, that's one thing, too, is that it's great that a lot of people actually do what they say they're yep. going to do. Yep. And, you know, we find out the people that don't, and that's where you have to hold them a little bit more, more accountable. accountable. And so, yeah, that, that was probably one of the ones that really, like, as it turned out, that really looked nice. Um, so if we are, so we're talking here, so maybe let me know one thing, or if, if any other people that maybe want to be on planning commission are, are listening, what's one thing you would tell them before they got involved with planning commission? Like what's one, one lesson? Uh, I like think the biggest thing is just going through shaped places and, you know, just learning it. I mean, you don't really have to know everything because you're going to you're going to learn as you go. Mm -hmm. I think you just have to have a passion to, you know, protect land rights. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I guess real estate is my my mm -hmm. thing. So and I've set up the national level on, you know, basically committees that protect land rights. And so for me, like that's been yeah. a big thing to just make sure that everyone's taken care of. So, I mean, if you you, you care about you know, the future of your city, the growth, um, you can actually make that impact by helping make decisions and deciding what's gonna go on. So I mean, honestly, at first, I didn't even know what I was getting myself yeah. into. So you, if you have any interest at all, I mean, it, it's, a, it's totally changed everything that, you know, from speaking to dealing conflict and mm -hmm. everything for me. Uh, so it's, it's something that, you know, you don't really get any benefit out of it other than yourself basically, you know, Yep. Personally, I'd say. Yeah, and, and I t totally agree with all those things. And what I maybe, maybe we need to communicate better with the residents who falls is how much you guys as planning commissioners care about the city, right? Yep. And you care about the people that come and are opposed to some of this mm -hmm. stuff. It, however, you're, you're also thinking of 200,000 people and not 10 people, right? Yep. You're thinking of the entire city. And, and similar to, to my job, too, you know, we run into that, too. You don't like people that are upset it's just yep. I mean you rather just make everybody happy but sometimes you can't and and like I said you and Sean for 10 years and all those thousands of decisions yep. you may be so you probably made a thousand decisions and maybe had what less than 10 really bad ones so yep. one less than one percent that were ones that you're like oh this is going to be a tough one right I well, mean I think we'd always do the numbers and there was always every year you guys tally the end of the year numbers and I, there was always just one yeah like we always thought there were so many more yeah and it literally is just like one that basically maybe we did one out of hundred. Yeah, yeah. It, or maybe the council decided to go a different direction yep. with it, right? So typically they've held up your guys's recommendation, the council, ninety nine percent of the time, right? Yep. Which is, to me, a great job and admirable to what you guys do, and then all the city staff trying to get those projects up to you guys and and making sure they're not a, a terrible project essentially right, right? Yep. so well from a staff member i just want to tell you thank you so much um you know for doing 10 years and and it's 
so much easier for staff members when you have people that want to do planning commission and want to do the full 10 years for training and learning and and how much you've mentored other people on the planning commission and so it's going to be really tough to lose you and sean here in may just because you guys have been so awesome and 10 years of doing it and thousands of items and now I mean, it's gonna have to go get a couple new people, I guess, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I, and I'll give Sean a lot of credit too, because there's been a lot of times that, you know, we we didn't agree. Oh yeah, absolutely, I agree. And literally, I would listen, he listened to me, and I'd yeah. listen to him, and like the two of us, like we, we can kind of understand each other, and yeah. that's the one thing that, as the group like gets to know each other, yeah. you understand how each person works. And so him and I don't even have to talk, and we can understand yeah. like, oh, hey, yeah. this is where you're gonna vote, you know? I have to say something because I don't agree with what yeah. is going on. And so there'd be times he'd speak. I'd be like, you know what? After I just spoke and said, yeah. you know, hey, I'm not for this. Yeah. He spoke and said something. And I'm like, I changed my mind. Yeah. Like, you know, so that's that's just, you know, part of the process is, yeah. you know, having good people that basically can challenge. And this is how I fit or, or how it basically should be based yeah. on what we've done in the past. And, and based on your guys' expertise too, right? Almost said feelings, but it's not about feelings. <laughs> so I uh, caught myself saying that. I'm like, no, it's not about feelings. It's pretty much logical type, you know, thinking on that type of stuff. Well, so. well, I hope, you know, you're done with planning commission, but we, you know, maybe there's an opportunity for some other boards within the city that you could, get, you know, could get on and give some of your expertise on there, you know? It's, like I said, it's hard to lose good members. So, but thank you so much for, for everything you've done, so. Thank you. Yeah, and thanks Sioux Falls for joining us for the month of May. Uh, the meeting this month will be on May 3rd at six o'clock at Carnegie Town Hall. You can come down and see Larry and Sean's last meeting in person or you can watch us on TV. Um, we also have uh, welcome any public input on any of the items we talked about or uh, we do have that five minute uh, public input comment at the end of the meeting where you can come and talk about any items, uh, planning related items or maybe come and tell Sean and Larry thanks for all the hard work that they've done. So thanks Sioux Falls and have a great day.